come from the chambers of the House of Representatives, the joint sessions, to hear Governor Ige's state of the state. There are a number of ideas put out. I like to call that place the marketplace of ideas. Generally, in the House, we take one meal at a time. Today, we had a whole menu of issues. But it's the ideas that stick are the ones that make the big difference. Remember, the state of the state is a great tradition in American democracy. It's a chance to look back and particularly to look forward to give a vision about where we are, who we are, and where we are going. The state of the state today, I think, fell short of that. And today, we're not going to criticize. We're going to be constructively analyzing and constructively comparing some of the ideas that were not mentioned. Number one, was the word Hawaiian ever mentioned today? Never. There was a host culture reference. Was there any mention of the correlation between homelessness and the non-funding of Department of Hawaiian Homelands? No. no. Zero. There was mentioning of following the law as to the reason why Super Ferry was sunk. But is this governor following the law when Judge Castaneda said you will fund $28 million from the Department of Hawaiian Homelands? No. no. There was no following of the law whatsoever, so it's a selective following the law of the law. Did he say anything about the 27,000 beneficiaries on the wait list for a Hawaiian homeland? No. no. Did he count up 96 years that the Hawaiians have been not funded to get a homeland? No. 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 Uh, only. So what do we have? We have a emphasis on homelessness, but we don't see a correlation between funding and homelessness of the Hawaiian people. We see a court order that says you will sufficiently fund the Hawaiians, but we don't see any mentioning of even the word Hawaiian in the message. This is cruel and unusual punishment. It's called benign neglect. It's called damning with faint praise. It's saying that the Hawaiians, again, with the injustices that have been done for decades and decades, are still not being paid attention to. That, I believe, is one of the things missing in this message. One of the things that we are going to hear as the Hawaiian Convention begins February 1. There's a lot of anger in the Hawaiian community, not just over the TMT, but over on many, many issues and many, many injustices. One of which is when the Speaker of this House, the President of the Senate, and the Governor are going against the ruling as the amicus court. Some of us are hoping to go with the 27,000 people on the wait list to have an amicus against Suki, have an amicus against the governor to do what is right for the Hawaiian community. That's my two cents for kicking off this meeting. Now I want to talk and recognize Andrea Tupola. Andrea Tupola. Hello, my Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. I think one of the things that really hurts is when I see people from the outer island expending their own money to come here and be a part, right? And I see a lot of you here, and was anything mentioned about DHHL and all of that support you guys brought here today? Who's from Kauai? Kauai. Yeah. Kauai. Who came from Molokai? Molokai! Yeah. Who came from Big Island? Yeah. Yeah. Who came from Maui? Yeah. yeah, any here from Lonai? No. We have many people who come here across the state, and I feel like at the very least, you should be acknowledged for coming. Thanks for being a part of it because all of you have been fighting for something, right? That's why you came here today. You want to make your voices be heard. You are in a place that is called your House of Representatives. It's supposed to be your voice, your community. But we can't hear it if it's never acknowledged. Lastly, being a representative from Nautapuli, to anyone from Waianae, what is our number one issue? Anyone? Traffic. Traffic. Oh. Yeah. Someone knows. We really wanted to hear more about how we're going to improve infrastructure. We have a huge problem on our coast with not enough access, only one road in and out, and it's not being very well upkept. We really wanted to hear the plans moving forward as to how we're going to make this better. We know there's more people moving to the island. How are we accommodating this? Not just with houses. How are we accommodating it with infrastructure? I think those are the questions we need to ask, because even on the outer island, infrastructure is a big deal. Water rights, yeah? right. sewage, things that affect Water's our right. daily way of living haven't been talked about. Those are real struggles. You know the kind of struggles every day you go home to? Yeah. Those are the struggles we want to address so that 
we really know that the voices of the people have been heard. And I'm going to turn the time over to my colleague, Bob McDermott, the representative from Ebel Beach. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge a Kapuna who we all admire and respect in this building, Uncle Joe Tassel. Joe, thank you. Joe comes around and reminds us every once in a while to stay on the straight and narrow, so we appreciate that. I think the takeaway today, one of them was, by not acknowledging the Hawaiians and funding the homeland issue, we, we don't get it. We don't understand that every Hawaiian we take out of the private economy and get on the homeland that they have earned, that's their entitlement, we free up a home, right? So all this focus on homelessness, we should understand that when we put Hawaiians on their homelands, we free up homes in the private sector. But we're not doing that. And I wish we'd attack the uh, funding of Hawaiian homelands like we attack the homeless issue. Because they're part and parcel. It's two bites at the apple. If you get Hawaiians out of the private sector renting and on homelands that they merit, you free up that private sector home. Secondly, I didn't know this was going to be a Hawaiian rally today. <laughs> so. My take on the governor's speech overall, uh, it was an engineer's speech. He's a very nice man, uh, but it was more of a, a laundry list of housekeeping issues. The one bright spot I saw was the idea about air conditioning a thousand classrooms. I thought that was positive. I thought that was good. But other than that, I didn't see any vision, if you will. Just talking about doing things we're supposed to do, like the water fund, like, uh, getting tax cheats. I mean, those are things we're supposed to do. So I am finished, and I'm going to turn it over to the ubiquitous state senator from Hawaii guy, Mr. Sam Sloan. Hey, hey. Aloha, everyone. Aloha. Listen, uh, you know, I listen carefully to every word of the governor, and I think it's too much to ask for one person, the governor, or even the legislature, to undo the harm that government has done over the decades. The governor acknowledged that. Government has failed, and yet more and more people come to the government and ask for housing, ask for health care, ask for transportation. You should be on your land. The government should not be regulating people for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. We should get out of that business. We have to talk about diversifying our economy. The governor was not specific about business, and I think that's what we have to do. But we all have to pull our own load, our own share. But we do have to work together. And we can't like the old Hawaii. So the message is that we, instead of going to government for help, let's give the government ideas. Let's work together. Let's listen to everybody. And let's be more. Thank you very much. Thank you.